shit out. It's Monday. We got out of work. I didn't even want to go to work today. But you know what? You got to do what you got to do. But look at what we got going after we are in play mode. Screw business. Look at who we got, boys and girls. It's stirring the pot. Okay. And my very special guest, and I don't know if I'm going to do this right because he could be still or he could not. I, I don't know what's going on, but we're just going to throw it out there. Saturday uh, Saturday night special or Mr. Saturday night or Saturday night video bruisey. I don't know what the hell he is, but hey, video bruisey, welcome to the show, my man. Thanks, Don. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I know I fucked up your intro. Uh, yeah. Are you still uh, Saturday night? Uh, no, uh, what? Saturday Night Delight. Saturday? Why can't I remember that? I used to chant that, but I haven't seen it in a long time. Not a so, while. Uh, I apologize, sir. And, and you know, <laughs> I'm not that bright. So even though we haven't seen each other in a while, I should have went back and looked at your names and maybe done a little research, but that's not what I do. I go in cold. I go in dangerous, and we just have fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Abruzzi, uh, first off, Welcome for coming in, spending the time with us, the fans, because this isn't my show. This is our show. This is for all of us. Uh, we get to learn about Mr. Abruzzi, the ones that don't know of him. We can look him up, get some more eyes on, on yourself and the product and what have you. Uh, so what we do around here is we talk character. We pull back the curtain a little bit. Uh, right. we're, we'll, we'll ask you your government name, but you don't always have to give it to us because then you get some of us freakos like looking looking for your so we don't have to dive into that if we don't want to but we just kick back we have some fun i got loose lips there might be an f-bomb dropped or so uh <laughs> so we'll just have some fun are you up for some of that my friend ah uh, sounds great sounds great well let me start right off the ripper with the whole world is topsy-turvy uh let's forget everything except for one thing right now uh the virus is still kicking uh, we can't shake that some bitch that that kin kin COVID. <laughs> the kin no, 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 never mind, never mind. Uh, uh, so I'd like to kind of start there. Make sure that yourself, your family, your circle, if you will, everybody, good out there, my friend. Yeah, we're all staying healthy. Uh, we're doing what we're supposed to. Uh, I actually just went back to work uh, this past Friday. <laughs> so uh, other than that, yeah, we've been cooped up and doing what we do. Well, congrats on getting back to the job because. When you're not at, you know what, just like kids, when they're in school, yep. we hate it. When we're at work, we hate it. But when we don't have it, it's like something's missing in my life right now. Oh, it's yeah. fucking work. So congrats on getting back to work, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I won't get into my gig because this is not about me. This is about Mr. Abruzzi. Uh, so I am saying that correct, right? Uh, Mr. Yes. Abruzzi, right? Yep, Abruzzi. All right. Now. I've, I've known Mr. Abruzzi for approximately uh, two years or so. Yep. Uh, met you at the Chop Shop. What a fantastic place that is up there. Uh, you smile. Every time I mention yep. the, top, uh, the Chop Shop, it brings smiles to people because the environment up there is so fun. Uh, the characters run rampant. And uh, I think it's one of the most unique uh, spots in our indie scene because – uh, the first time I went there, very scary, my friend. It was at nighttime. It was like a horror scene. Oh, yeah. I had no clue where it was. So you know how that would be going for the first time. Uh, but once I got in there, we had a lot of fun. And I've met some fine, fine men and women out of the chop shop. So I've been rambling and rambling and rambling. Uh, we took a little time getting this together. So I might have hit a little bit of devil's lettuce. And that gets me up. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Mr. Abruzzi, I'd like to talk about uh, character. Uh, because okay. I go timeline. I jump a lot of timelines. So just follow yep. me and we'll have some fun. Uh, the character Saturday Night Delight, now that I uh, have been told such, uh, <laughs> tell us about the character. You come out, you look flashy. You got the glasses. You got these cool, like, Hawaiian-type shirts, if you will. You come out, everybody's clapping and singing with you. You've got a cool, upbeat uh, theme song. The character itself uh, did it come together with yourself, or did you have help with a support system around you? Uh, how did the character come about? Well, I, st I started doing the Saturday Night Delight probably about seven years ago, six years ago. But uh, we actually started really using that name uh, about, about three and a half years ago. Um, okay. So we actually like worked that into the gimmick. Um, 
I was actually a heel at the time I'm in RWA. Ooh. And then from there, we ended up going off to a different different subject with the Saturday Night Delight. Uh, I was actually at the casino, and we played it off like I won big on the on the, the slot machines. So then that, that was that promo. And then the next show, I ended up showing up with a shitload of money. And then everybody's like, well, what happened? I was like, oh, I'm a big ball at now. Like, I won a bunch of money. I was like, and now I'm going to live the party life. Like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm the gambling man. Like, shit. So uh, oh. that, that's how all that came together. And uh, it, was, it was between me, T, uh, Cipriano, my brother, and uh, Jimmy Hansen at the time. Well, that sounds like a fun transition from whatever uh, you – we'll get into what you were doing previous. Yep. But that sounds like a really, really fun transition. Yeah, it was. Uh, you are having, it seems, when you come out to the ring, and I know we like to turn that switch on in wrestling, yep. but even though when you turn that switch on, you can tell when the men and women aren't having the best of days. Uh, yep. You, my friend, you seem to be on fire every single time you come through that curtain. And me as a fan, I appreciate that because we go to wrestling to leave the bullshit behind. Uh, yep. And I know you men and women do the same thing. Yep. So I appreciate you coming in. You got a lot of pizzazz. Uh, again, you're flashy. The music is kicking. You have a lot of fun. You're all about the fans. Uh, what I also like to talk about is, uh, first off, how long have you been in the business? Uh, I started back in 2008 with uh, RWA, with T. Carry the 12, multiply Yeah, it's uh, 12, uh, 12, 12, 12, 12 years five, this, five, uh, this summer. The square root of 96. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> now the, <laughs> the reason why I ask is uh, because you've built this character, but this was an evolution of character. And we love yep. to talk about evolution of character on this show. And not only that, you've already mentioned you were a heel back then, but I've only known you as a baby face, a good oh, yeah. guy, if you will. Uh, now, my question for you is with that time you've spent in the business, uh, did you hear the fans right off the ripper? You know, to kind of get that chemistry feeling when you were getting into wrestling, did it take some kind of a time? Because usually, uh, most counts it does. Uh, and was there a situation when you can really tell, or or you felt the click between us, the fans, and yourself as a wrestler? Like, okay, now I get it. Um, yeah. I mean, right right off the bat, um, I was very shy, and I was a very timid person when I first started. Uh, I had no emotion when coming to the ring or in the ring. And then finally, after like a year or two, um, I actually started building up the uh, the courage and actually getting the charisma and everything. And uh, I want to say it was RWA's first live show in my hometown of Johnston. Um, it was at Rhino and Jim. And uh, the, it was, the main event was me and JT Dunn for the RWA Triple Crown Championship. And uh, it was a sold out house, probably like two, uh, 200 and something people. And we tore the fucking roof off the place. And then right then, that night, I was like, holy shit. I was like, I think I found it. I was like, I, I think that's it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was pro probably like a year, year, year and a half after I started. Now, uh, when, when you're coming up in wrestling, it's so easy to have that tunnel vision. I got to have this spot right. I got to have that spot right. Oh, the, the, the ref is going to have a spot. I got to make sure I'm there for that. My, my opponent, I got to look out for his or her safety. There's so much that's already running through your head as a new wrestler. Fans are usually like the last thing that I find, talking to all you men and women, that seem to come at the very last token uh, when we should really be in there in the mix, but your brain is so shuffled with so many things. Oh, yeah. uh, is, that, is that true to say, sir? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um... Pretty much when when I first started, like I said, I was I was very shy and timid. So I was just like more like worrying about my spots, worrying about where I was in the ring or what was going on in the match. And I wasn't really paying too much attention to the crowd. Um, but then, like I said, after I finally gotten used to everything and I, I pretty much stopped calling spots and just calling everything in the ring. So then that way I could actually work off the crowd. Mm. So uh, I could tell if the crowd wasn't into it. Or if they were really into it, to keep going with that. If they weren't into it, then I'm like, well, all right, we're going to switch something up. Let's do this. So uh, after a little while, I actually got used to it. And then I started working with the crowd a lot more and realized that that was a huge part of the match. And without the crowd, it doesn't matter if your match is good or not to you. But if it's not good to them, 
then it's not going to be overall a good, you know, a good product. Mm. Uh, Ad libbing or changing things on the fly when you're in the ring. Uh, yep. Do you find it? Uh, do you find it comfortable to work? You know, uh, in, in the tenure that you've had in wrestling right now? Uh, yeah, um, I'd, I'd rather go out there and call probably about eighty-five percent of the match in the ring um, because uh, we can call spots and spots and spots. And when I get out there, I instantly once I hit the curtain, I forget all the spots. <laughs> and then I, I, I get in the ring, they start coming back to me, but it's not in the right spots where they're supposed I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, I don't know if it's this. I was like, I don't know if it's right now, but I'm going to do it. So I call for it, and they're like, no, not yet. And I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd rather call it in the ring. Uh, now, you've mentioned RWA a few times already, and you even said – on their first show, is that correct? I'm saying you were on their very first show. I was on their very first live show. Okay. So, uh, we we had we had the other shows in like the factory and like the, the backyard days, uh, okay. but the very the very first live show, yeah, I was on. Now uh, I've talked about RWA on this show a lot. RWA, uh, for those that don't know, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. They run out of the Chop Shop out of Pawtucket, Rhode Island, and I'm telling you, my friends, lots of fun. I've got some cool memories. I've only been specifically RWA at the Chop Shop. I've been to a bunch of shows over there, but RWA, I've only been to a couple. But I will tell you, uh, it was Legacy Night. And, uh, man, you guys, with Legacy, this thing, all right, I'm going to pump the fucking brakes. <laughs> you guys with Legacy is off the goddamn charts. And I got hair standing on, on my skinny little arm just talking about it because it's a two-night event. There's like 11 matches per night. We're talking like 22 matches over the course of a two-night period. Uh, first thing, holy fuck. Second thing, <laughs> you really uh, give us, the fans, our money's worth uh, because it's only like uh, 10 or 15 bucks. I forget the exact price. Yeah. Uh, but my goodness, my friend, RWA on those legacy nights, off the charts, my friend. Holy yeah, crap. Right. So that's the only kind of memories that I do have of RWA. So I'm going to kind of stick with those. Yep. And then we're going to go in their earlier tenure. Now, on, on the legacy shows, I, I got shit for brains. So I can't remember every single show that I've been to. Uh, were you uh, at, I think I was at 2000, let's see. 2000, uh, this is your 2023. Are we 2023 right now? Uh, I think so. No, 2020. 2020. Uh, I believe <laughs> I was at uh, Legacy 2000. 19 or 2018 and i can't for the life of me and i still have the stub i have the stub i made yep. sure that i yep. saved it uh are, are you a regular on these big shows because that's the wrestlemania of the yeah. rwa yep um this past year uh 2019 i was in a uh, rumble and then on sunday i was in uh like a like a proven ground type match uh um, okay i forgot who else was in the match with me but I was like, saw like a representative from Proven Ground, representative from Watch This Fight, representative from RWA, and a representative from RICW. Nice. Um, and uh, 2018, uh, I want to say I was in like a war game style type match. I want to say that was 18, either 18 or 17. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, it was like Team Phoenix versus uh, my brother. Oh, my brother's team, pretty much Team Cipriano. And uh, I was, uh, it was a lot of blood and a lot of ass kicking. And uh, it was a very long match. <laughs> wow. I, I feel that I would remember uh, such a scuffle, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you've also mentioned your brother a few times here. Yeah. I, I yeah. love, I love, absolutely love to talk about support system uh, with you men and women because I feel as a fan, and, and I mean, this is my opinion, there's many sports out there. And I know many don't consider wrestling a sport. It's yeah. called other things and what have you, you know, sports yeah. entertainment yeah. and such, whatever. Whatever the label is, the label is. But I feel in any sport, wrestling is probably, A, the most unique, and B, probably the hardest thing to pull off because you, your own brand, you're your own salesman. You have to have, when that spotlight comes on, you've got to be on your game. And there's so many men and women in the game that it's very hard to stand out and do such. Yeah. So without, uh, with the perseverance of what it takes to do in wrestling, uh, talk about the support system because your, your brother is a wrestler. I'd really like to touch upon that. Uh, how did that come about, my friend? Uh, let's see. The, uh, when I, well, right before I, I started, um, he actually, I had a pickup truck. 
So he called me up one day and he's like, hey, could you uh, give me a ride to go pick up uh, a new couch that I was getting from my house? So I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. So I went, gave him a hand with it. And he's like, all right, he's like, I got to get going. He's like, well, you know, here's some money for gas. And I'm like, oh, where are you going? He's like, oh, I'm going to T's house. He's like, we have training tonight. I was like, training for what? And he's like, oh, for wrestling. And I was like, you're wrestling? I was like, you never told me this shit? What the hell's wrong with you? So I was like, I was like, call him up. I was like, tell him I'm on my way with you. So he's like, all right. And that, that's literally how that, that all started. And then I was like, when I first met T, and uh, you know, pretty much from there on out, we've just been one big family, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so we, we, uh, that's a fantastic story, my friend. I love yeah. hearing that kind of stuff. Uh, you're hanging out. Your brother, your brother's going to 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 go to tease. Yeah. They're gonna talk or work wrestling, and you're like, yeah. wait, what? And he <laughs> blows out the wrestler thing. You're like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> I love that shit. And now yeah. look at you, my friend. You've been in the yeah. game ever since, correct? Yeah, uh, I was. I was probably. I want to say two months before their very first legacy, and then I trained for those two months, and then I was actually on the first legacy. So, so yeah. I've, as we've been speaking, I, I, I took my tablet oh, shit. and I, I went and did a little digging. I'll decide <laughs> that. Yeah. Oh, shit is coming to you real quick. Hold on. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did look back and it was uh, RWA Renegade Wrestling Alliance for two day legacy. And it was 2018, my friend. OK, that's the one I went to. And all right. I mean. The, the, the card is, is just fucking crazy. Todd Harris. We're, we're talking day two. Todd Harris, Mike Montero, Middlesex Express, the Beach Bums. The Beach Bums! I mean, oh, I, yeah. and I, <laughs> I love the Middlesex Express to, to oh, pieces. Yeah. Always have. But the Beach Bums! I mean, holy caroli. Uh, I mean, the Main State Posse uh, and the only, uh, the one and only Izzy Starr, Jack Connor, Sean Leader. I, I mean, I, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Team Espana against King Leon the Six and Davey Cash. I mean, we could sit here and go on and on. You guys, uh, holy crap, again, what a card that you guys and, – and I'm not saying – I'm not trying to just pull legacy out of RWA and saying that's yep. the only cool thing, but uh, that's what I've seen. That's what yeah. I, I've, <laughs> I've known, and a uh, hell of a time. And, and another thing, uh, the Chop Shop, it's not a gigantic venue. But when RWA Legacy is going, that place is standing room only, literally. There is, yeah. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Uh, now, what I'd like to talk about in, in that aspect is some of, some of the shows are lighter than others. When yeah. you see a jammed house, standing room only, I, when you come out that curtain, and I know you guys and girls check previous, but when you come out the curtain, your energy has got to be maybe just a tad different when you come out, no? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, when we're looking out there and we see the crowd, we get we get the little jitters and stuff, and we're like, all right, cool, this is nice. But then once we actually go through that curtain with our music, it's totally, totally different ball game. <laughs> uh, is it hard uh, for one Vinny and Bruzy to turn that switch on from right behind the curtain to get through that curtain? No, nah, no, nah, I, I could be behind the curtain, all miserable and pissed off because something happened. And then one, once I literally walk through that curtain, I got a big smile on my face and I'm, I'm ready to dance. <laughs> that that's awesome man uh because again uh, even as we're speaking beautiful smile a lot of fun a lot of laughs uh now i i got so much to talk about mr bruzy and and remember i said there was a holy shit moment for you because you were like uh-oh uh, yep. i kind of did there was one <laughs> holy shit i did see a picture uh, uh -oh. and I want to say it was like 2018, maybe even earlier. Uh, I'll have to take a look, see, uh, but you'll, you'll be able to tell me, uh, it, it's from one, uh, from one Isana and, uh, uh. <laughs> you're, yeah, <laughs> look at him go. Uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, now, yeah, I oh, never yeah. expected this, this, and this was like maybe a half hour before we connected. It threw yep. me for a fucking loop, my friend. Um, <laughs> You're in a, like a uh, Theodore Livingston, uh, Liv I always call him <laughs> Theodore Livingston, a Theodore <laughs> Livingston uh, yep. kind of strongman suit, but it's red yep. uh, instead of the gold or yellow, whatever. And uh, you're doing a little pose there and you're like, ah, you're looking <laughs> mighty cute. Uh, what okay. in the hell is going on in that picture, my friend? Uh, well, I mean, that, that just shows how, how much fun the uh, the chop shop is. <laughs> um, oh, so somebody literally whipped it out of that bag and they're like, who wants it? 
And I was like, give it to me. I was like, I'll put it on. So I put it on. And all of a sudden, I saw He's like, I got to take a picture. So I'm like, all right. So I turned around, just did a little pose for her. Uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't realize she was going to put it up on Facebook. And then I go look at my phone. I realize I got tagged. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I <was> like, no. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, memories of wrestling, my friend. That's that's why I love wrestling yep. right there, man. Oh, yeah. uh, and I know we as fans wouldn't see that behind the curtains. But, again, uh, you men and women behind the curtain, you take – uh, your memories with you as well. And, and, and I'm so glad you shared that because I saw that picture and I go, what the fuck is going on here? I gotta, I gotta ask Mr. Abruzzi what, what's oh, happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'd actually like, uh, I keep bringing up my tablet because there's a couple of things I have to ask you, but yeah. I want to get into something else. Right. Uh, I, again, I jumped timelines here. Yeah, now you've said you've been, uh, the Saturday night delight for about three years or so. Correct. Now, previous to that, you also mentioned that you were still Saturday Night Delight, but you evolved him as a character, if you will. Uh, yeah. Could you talk to us, still staying in within that Saturday Night Delight character, talk to, talk to us about how it started originally, uh, why you were a heel, and how the transition, I mean, we already kind of already yeah. spoke about yeah. why yeah. the transition specifically. Uh, all right, let's see, when um, I was doing, uh, what was it? All right, so I was doing, right before Saturday Night Delight, I was the uh, Sinister Sicilian. And we I, uh, we ended up working a show with uh, somebody who's on NXT right now who used to go as a Sicilian psychopath, uh, uh, Tommaso. And uh, he told me one day, he's like, what's your nickname? Uh, the, what, what's your name? And I told him. And he's like, you got to drop it. I was like, Why? He's like, cause I, he's like, I'm a Sicilian psychopath. I'm like, oh yeah, shit. <laughs> like, right. he's like, never mind. I was like, I'll drop it. I was like, don't worry about it. So then I just went out that show as Vinny Abruzzi. I'm like, whatever. Um, and then I'm sitting there. I'm like, well, I was like, what the hell can I do now? And freaking everybody's always saying how happy I am and like how outgoing I am and this and that. They're like, what about Saturday Night Delight? They're like, that's fitting for you. And I was like, I, know, I was like, I could work with that. I'm like, all right. So I started off as a face. But then um, in RWA, they're like, well, we got this angle that we're going to have you go heel. And uh, I was working with Tony Clash. And um, I, was, I was the face in that. Man. We were both kind of like faces. Um, but then I ended up pretty much giving him a low blow and then having some other people come out and help me win. Um, which ended up turning the heel. And then that started a big storyline for like a year and a half, two years with wow. my team against T Phoenix team for RWA. Mm. Um, and then... Some people in that group kind of took their ball and went home. And then that's when I ended up freaking doing the promo at, uh, at the casino, doing all that, and ended up joining T Phoenix's team. And the other, the other team, we ended up picking up two other people and ended up, <laughs> ended up having that blood bash. <laughs> uh, now, I kind of like to talk about the storyline uh, leading up to such because you said it was lengthy. And, and yep. for me, for me personally, the flavor of wrestling that I like. I love a story. Uh, you yeah. can you can drag it out. I don't mind because when we come back, we get to be part of that every single time. And yeah. I absolutely love it. Uh, I love story. I obviously love uh, good in-ring work. Oh, yeah. um, I, I grew up in the 70s. So my first live event when I was a kid was uh, 78. And, you know, the likes of uh, the Wild Samoans, Ivan Putski, oh, Tito yeah. Santana, Bob Backlund, Cowboy Bob Orton. Those are the guys that were there at that live event. So that's kind of what I grew up on, uh, the Don Morocco's, if you will. Okay. And so storyline and, and some good wrestling, you got me, you know, and a character. Give me that character. You know, it doesn't, yep. you know, it, as long as you, like you, like I said, you come out with a little flash, got a good smile. You got a, a, an uplifted uh, theme song. You have fun with the fans. I'm hooked, uh, you know, and it, <laughs> I've always said it on this show, and I know I'm a fan, but we're fucking easy, my friend. We latch <laughs> on to very little things uh, wrestling fans do. Yep. Uh, but uh, but uh, the character itself, it seems like you're having a ton of fun with the character itself. And uh, now the evolution of it, there was a heel stint. Now there's a face again. Uh, what do you prefer working as heel or face and why? That's funny. I was actually thinking about this the other day. Um, I I like heel because 
uh, yeah, I, I just love talking shit to the crowd. The, the, like you said, the, the crowd's easy. So, I mean, once you, get that, once you get them bit to hate you, it's the easiest match in the world. As, as, a, you know, as, as a face, you actually got to work for that. And mm-hmm. uh, throughout the whole, you got to do your facial expressions. You got to do everything. You got to try earning them the whole entire match. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I, I love being here. Uh, do you mind, like you were speaking of uh, with the face portion of it, you have to be a little more expressional. And I know the, 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 the bad guys, they have, a, <laughs> they have a lot of expressions too, but it's usually yep. just a sourpuss for the yeah. most times yep. or laughing when the other person is hurt. Yep. So there's really, you only have to do a couple, if you will, to get by. But like you're saying, as a face, you've got to do a lot more work. Uh, do you find the facial expressions, because that's a big thing within a character and in that ring to express to us. Uh, do you find that it, it's hard for you to do that? Did, did it come comfortable or was it something you had to work at? No, I actually had to work with it. Uh, the person that actually helped me a lot with, with that was uh, Mike Montero. Because... Um, well, back in the day, he told me, he's like, you know, he's like, you have it to be a face. He's like, everybody loves you. He's like, you're over. He's like, but you just have to show more face to the crowd. He's like, when, when you're selling, he's like, you have your face buried in the mat or like buried in your arm when you're trying to get up. He's like, if you actually look at the crowd and look like you're in pain and give them what they want, you know, like, what, like how you're failing. He's like, the crowd's going to feel it with you. He's like, and then they're going to want you to come back more and kick his ass even harder. So I was like. All right. I was like, I could do that. Love Mike Montero. I had yep. him on the show. He's uh, love, love Mike Montero and, and find words to pass down to somebody with, a, you know, that wasn't really grasping that portion yep. of it because we want, we don't want to see you hurt, but we want to yep. see you in pain. Isn't yeah. that the weirdest shit? I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and again, uh, as he stated, Mr. Montero, that comeback, we are waiting for that comeback, my friend. Oh, yeah. uh, so get your ass kicked. Let's see the grimace on your face, because when that comeback starts come, you know, it, it starts playing. We are right there with you. And that's, again, part of the story that you're telling us in that ring. Oh, yeah. uh, so I always appreciate when you guys and girls are really giving it to us like that, because, again, I've, I've said it. There's not just one aspect when you come to the ring. There's 1.3 trillion things you have to do as one athlete, as one performer, as right. one, uh, you know, just everything. There's so much involved in wrestling. So I, 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 I'm built, I've always said I'm built like a candle, but I've transitioned, <laughs> I've transitioned. Uh, somebody said I was built like a kendo stick and, and I think that's more fitting. And I, I am, I'm built like a right. kendo stick. So I would never get in that ring. And I, I give you men and women, a thousand percent credit for doing what you do. So thank you as a fan. Uh, that, that That's for sure. Uh, now, I'd like to talk about your peers in the chop shop because right. I've talked to so many. There's a lot of great uh, men and women. There's a lot of <laughs> a lot of characters that are within right. the chop shop. Uh, now, this is to slight nobody at all. Uh, just off the top of your head, And you've already mentioned Mike Montero. If you want to go back to it, that's fine. But give us maybe two or three names that really stand out uh, to you within the chop shop that have kind of helped you uh, not maybe guide or maybe kind of helped your career along with those little things being said and such. Uh All right. So definitely Montero. Um, mm, Damn, there's a lot of them. Like I, I know. There's so many. This is, again, this is not to slight oh, yeah. anybody no, in the no. least bit. Yeah. Um, i probably say my brother. Uh, well, separate. Because, uh, you know, with him, he's he's definitely stuck it out with me. Uh, me and him have had some battles. And we always come back and talk to each other and tell, tell, tell each other what we thought about it and what we did wrong and what we could have did right and how, how we fix it. Um, and probably T, because T's been there since me started training day one, and he's always busting my ass. And back in the day, fucking, I, w- I was that bump dummy in the ring when I first started training. Um, so I, I definitely learned how to take a lot of like the level three bumps from them, from him throwing me up in the air when I was only like 175 pounds, and now I'm <laughs> 250. So he ain't doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, you've named some fantastic names, and I know there is a huge like Chris Jericho's list in the middle of the ring. Oh, yeah. I know there's a list <laughs> that a long. Th- th- there is, and I know there is. Uh, you've you've mentioned some fine names. Uh, now, I'm going to n- mention a name, and I, if I don't do this uh, with the personalities that I talk to at the chop shop, uh, I'll get some slack. And, and I don't need oh, no okay. slack from this guy. All right. Uh, I, I, ha- I have a feeling <laughs> who. <laughs> Whenever I lead up to who it is, they already got a, a, an idea of who it is. Uh, so let me relight my cigarette because I want to be calm for this. All right. Now, there's a, a a young guy that has made his presence in the chop shop. And when I mean made his presence, he has touched so many lives within wrestling already over oh, yeah. it, not just a chop shop and, and a couple other areas. Uh, we are talking about one <laughs> whew, coach C uh, yeah. now coach C young kid, 15 years old, obviously not legal to get in, but what a personality outside the ring. Please, sir. Talk, to, <laughs> talk to us a little bit about coach C my friend. Uh, see the first time I met him, I told him he was a crazy little bastard. Uh, he, he, he was just going on and on and on and on. I was, I was like, this kid's awesome, though. Uh, but no, you know, Coach C definitely has a good head on his shoulders, and uh, he'll, he'll definitely make it somewhere once he turns 18 because uh, the stuff that he does now, and he's not even actually in the ring yet. But I, I've, I've seen him come down there and mess around and run the ropes and stuff. I mean, he's, he, he could definitely, if he sticks with it, he'll, he'll definitely have what, you know, what it takes to actually make it somewhere. Uh the create the creativity out of such a young mind yeah. uh, w- with wrestling, you know, the whole social aspect of it, the social media aspect of it. And he is not afraid to push a single person. He will push oh. every single person he possibly can. That kid love him for that so much. Uh, I tried to do the same with as much stuff that I've got going on. I've always yeah. tried to do the same exact thing, man. I don't, I, I, I don't say uh, he's not worth my time. I always push yep. uh, he or she as, as much as I possibly can. Um, now, Coach C, uh, what I want, what, what was I, what I was driving at is uh, the psychology portion of the program. He's got a big leap on that, if you will, working. He's got oh, yeah. three years left to to get legal age. My friend, I think he's got an upper hand, as did one AJ Phoenix, and we see where AJ Phoenix is going. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, I don't mean to compare AJ Phoenix and Coach C. AJ's going to kick me in the face for that. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but the correlation is very valid because, again, AJ grew up in the business, and he already had yeah. that hands up on the psychology end of the program. And I think Coach C, he's going to be doing some cool and fun things in the very new, near future. Once he turns 18, man, that kid's going to be on fire. Not that, that he isn't now. Yep. Uh, yep. Now... I do have, which I normally don't do, but as of late, you chop shop guys and girls have been kind of brought in a question or two. Uh, So I I actually got a question. And again, I don't normally do this. Uh, I did it for Ref Quinn. Are you familiar with Ref Kevin Quinn, my friend? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Holy fuck (laughs) me. I love that guy to pieces. What a gem he is. Yeah, he's he's Uh, really nice. There was a slew of questions for this man. He loves the fan questions, and I usually don't yep. take fan yep. questions. So we spent a good part of our interview with fan questions, but it gave us yep. some fine yep. material. Uh, now, there's a couple here. They're from the same person, and, and, I, and, and I, I'm, I think I'm announcing him in the right light, but correct me if I'm wrong. His name is Bob. I don't want to use his last name. I'm just going to call him Ref Bob. Uh, does that make any sense to you at all? Yep. Okay. There is a Ref Bob at the chop shop. I know I've seen him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is kind of a two-parter, and I'll run one from into the other, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, laugh my fucking ass off, specifically. Ask him about the Ref that we never seen Again, it's my favorite Vinny story. Shut up, Bob. He said he got this. Laugh my fucking ass off. Uh, please uh, digress, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was an RICW show. Uh, it was myself versus Nick Marchand. 
and so we were we were just gonna go all in. And uh, towards the end of the match, it was gonna be a ref bump. He was gonna I was gonna go set up hit uh, Nick Marshan with the bicycle kick. He was gonna duck out of the way. I was gonna kick the ref. And Bob's like, oh, do you want me to do your match? I'm like, yeah, you're taking a bicycle kick. He's like, all right. <laughs> and this other new kid that I, I, I met him a while ago, but he just came back. It was his first show back. And he's like, oh, Vinny, he's like, I wanted to do your match. So I'm like, all right. I was like, well, you're taking a bicycle kick. And he's like, all right, yeah, no problem. <laughs> like, all right. I, was like, I was like, make sure you put your hand up. I was like, I don't want to kill you. He's like, all right, no, yeah, you're good, you're good. So Darren, the, me and Nick are doing our thing, fucking like 15 minutes into the match. I look at the ref. I'm like, get in the corner. I was like, the spot's coming up. So he's like, all right. So he gets in the corner. He starts walking out. Nick's in front of him. I go to freaking kick Nick. Nick ducks. I blast this kid square in his face. Never put his hand up. Nothing. He went flying. Probably, he was probably like three or four feet out of the buckle. He went flying <laughs> back into the buckle. And then rolled out of the ring. And so, uh, Greg was outside the ring because he was supposed to slide in and hit Nick with the chair. So freaking... The ref rolls out the ring. And Greg looks at him. He's like, you all right? He's like, you good? And the kid's just, like, laying on the ground. Out, not oh, answering. Shit. Oh, shit. So Greg, Greg finally, like, wakes him up. Because I guess I knocked him out. And he's like, are you okay? He's like, oh. <laughs> and that's the only noise. So Greg's like, yeah, well, he's good. So Greg slid in. We did the spot. We walked in the back after. And I looked at him. I was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I was like, I told you to put your hand down. I was like, I didn't want to kill you. The, kid, the kid's probably like half my size. So uh, he's like, oh, no, no, no. He's like, I'm good. I'm good. And I was like, all right. He's like, I'll see you guys in two weeks at the next show. The kid never came back since. And this was about a year and a half ago. Oh, shit. So I was like, oh, it's like, oh well. I was like, you want you want to jump in the spot and be like, I'll take it. And then not put your hand up. Fuck it. <laughs> so the ref that has never been seen again. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh Ref Bob, thank you for that question because that was a fantastic story. I love that. Oh, see, that's that's the kind of shit us fans would never hear, my friend. And this no. is why I do this stuff. Uh, it's to A, push yourself, uh, B, get to know you, and C, get these little funny stories that we would never, ever hear as fans. So I, 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 I thank you for that. I, I, I have the video on Facebook. I'll send you the link after so you can actually see it. <laughs> please do. Yes, please do. That would be, <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, now, again, from Russ Bob. Yep. Seriously, bring up the tables match with him and Dozer. That match is definitely an RICW's top 10. Now, before you answer... We've spoken about RICW twice on this interview right now. Yep. RICW, for those that don't know, Rhode Island Championship Wrestling, again, out at the Chop Shop at Pawtucket, Rhode Island, put on some fantastic fantastic shows. Uh, talk about this table match with one Mr. Chris Dozer because he's been on this show as well. Um, let's see. It was for the uh, RICW Universal Champion. He was champion at the time. Um, I jumped him several weeks before that, several shows before that, pretty much throwing out the challenge for the title. Um, me and Dozer are very good friends. So every time we get in the ring, we beat the shit out of each other. Um, and this was no difference. Uh, we actually talked about it and we were saying how the only big spot we were going to do in the match was the finish. Um, but probably about 45 minutes before the match actually happened, I looked at him. I was like, you want a gig? And he's like, uh, yeah, right, fuck it. I was like, because I'm going to. So, and he's like, I thought we weren't. Go he's like, I thought we weren't going crazy. I'm like, yeah, I was like, shit changes. So then I ended up, I ended up going to the, the the liquor store, grabbing some beer, and me and him ended up chugging the beers. And we, uh, oh yeah. So we're, we're sitting there drinking the beer, and I was just like, all right, so what are we gonna do now? I was like, we gotta figure some stuff out. So he's like, we're just gonna beat the shit out of each other, like always. He's like, there's plenty of weapons underneath the ring, and I went good. So I'm like, all right. Um. We literally started off pretty much just punching each other in the face. And then he ended up getting over on me, throws me out of the ring, beats the shit out of me with a chair. Uh, we end up working into the crowd. He goes to uh, give me a power bomb through with, uh, the merch table. He's like, well, this is a tables match, right? He's like, I'm just going to use this one. He goes to pick me up. I end up reversing it, giving him a back body drop on the concrete. Um, and then I ended up beating the crap out of him for a little bit. Broke one of the chairs over his head. 
which is where he ended up gigging. Um, and uh, yeah, we just kept beating the shit at the friggin' uh, superplex. Um, he hit me with his punch about seven times. I hit him with about three or four bicycle kicks and the rock by baby that I do. And finally, the uh, the finish, I uh, I set up the table on the outside of the ring because he was going to hit me with the dozer driver off the top rope. Uh-oh. Um, I set up the table. I put it exactly where I wanted on the, the padding on the outside. Um, he ended up hitting me. So I fell off the apron again, and I bumped into the table. So I'm like, ah, it's all right. I was like, it didn't move. Well, it moved a lot, apparently, because it's <laughs> right off the padding. Uh, <laughs> so as, as we're getting up there, all I can hear is actually Divine in the crowd. Don't do it. He's like, don't do it. He's like, one of you is going to get hurt. Don't do it, please. And uh, we end up doing it. My head bounced off the concrete, busted, busted my head wide open in the back, the blood all over the place, and uh, knocked me out. He ended up knocking himself out because when I went through the table and hit the floor, I guess I ended up kneeing him in the side of the head. Um, and he ended up cutting his stomach a little bit because the metal underneath the table actually sliced him. Um, and then when I ended up coming to, Jacqueline Spox was there trying to wake us up. And apparently I tried kneeing her in the face because I had no idea what the fuck was going on. I thought me and Doza oh, was still wrestling. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. So all I felt was her touching my leg, and I threw my knee up at her. And she's like, it's me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I was like, my head hurt. <laughs> she's like, yeah, you're bleeding really bad. <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right, cool. But, uh, yeah, so um, Greg oh, Sip was there, so he ended up picking me up and pretty much carrying me to the back, wrapping my head and everything. But, uh, yeah, it was, that, was, that was a nice, fun little ass kicking that we both got that night. <laughs> Okay, pa- we're, we're going to hit the Pa Jose button on this match right here for a couple minutes. All right. All right, first thing is first. Uh, for those that don't know, when you gig, you kind of make yourself bleed. Uh, you, you initiate your own blood, if you will. Uh, second off, I've heard that by many, and I do many of you my, uh, fine men and women, some of your best friends, what are we going to do? I don't know, but let's kick the fuck out of each other. Why do friends, the best of friends in the business, why do you, and, uh, why, why, why do you say that to each other? Because it's, uh, you know, because we know we can trust each other, where if we go out there with somebody we don't know that much, or somebody we're really not that close with, they, they might not like getting snugged, or, you know, but okay. with your, fr- with your friends who train with each other, who go there and fuck around all the time, we know how hard we can hit each other and get away with it. Okay, now, another part of this, uh, Man, what a lot to take in in that one match. It, it, it's got to be on the, the, the top, the oh, top yeah. uh, uh, up there in the RICW archive, uh, archives. Uh, now, your friends, yep. it changed from, hey, we're just going to blah, 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 to uh, Vinny, get, <laughs> Vinny gets a hair up his ass, and uh, we're about to make things, some magic happen. Yep. Uh, you go through all of this. Uh, things happen that you know weren't supposed to happen with the, with the head. You know, you know, and stuff and whatnot. Yep. Both of you, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Miss Jacqueline Sparks almost took one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, after the fact, when you get back, uh, when you two get together, and I know there's a lot of stuff going on after, after yep. this match specifically, uh, but when you guys are together and thinking back and reflecting, um, are you guys saying to each other, uh, what the fuck did we just do? We should have <laughs> just stuck to plan A or plan B was off the fucking charts man what a great time that was where are you guys at once you kind of calm down and, and talk to each other uh, all right well, well right before i answer that i'll take you back um it was like two nights before they put up the card for the show and uh they put up for our time limit they said 20 uh no 15 to 20 so i commented to dozer i was like fuck that we're going like four <laughs> and he started laughing he's like <laughs> He's like, guys. No, he's, he's, he's like, just for that, I'm gonna kick your ass for a half hour, and then we're gonna go to the finish. So I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> all right, we, we actually ended up going 35 minutes, and I was just like, what the hell? Um, but yeah, but when we go back to the locker room after we both hugged each other, fucking both apologized, even though we know we did nothing wrong. Right. Um, right. But uh, he looked at me. He's like, why the fuck did we change that match? And I was <laughs> like, because we did, and it was awesome. And he's like, well, yeah, I know it was. He's like. But I'm hurt, and I was like, yeah, so am I. I was like, it was a title match, it's a table match. I was like, we had to go all out. I was like, what the hell? He's like, I'm glad we changed it. He's like, but I'm regretting every second of it. Uh, 
I, I can't wait till we get back so I can talk to Mr. Dozer personally about this match. <laughs> right. I can't wait to bring it up. Uh, again, those stories, your reflection, his reflection, we wouldn't hear this stuff and, unless, you know, unless uh, Ref Bob were to bring up stuff like this. So this is fantastic. Uh, I love just kicking back and talking as friends, Mr. Abruzzi. I, again, and I know I say thank you a lot, but spending your time with us, I, I thank you so much for sharing like you are. No and, and, and I just love you guys and girls to death. Uh, now, the Chop Shop, you found yourself there from day one. Uh, and, and you're still at the chop shop. Uh, and I know you, you've you spread your wings to other promotions and such. Uh, but why the chop shop being your home base? You, you haven't really strayed from there. That's really your home base. That's correct, sir? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, why is it home sweet home? Because um, pretty much RWA is the first place that actually gave me a home. Um, okay. And then every other company that ran out of there at the beginning of it, um, you know, when I when I had a weekend free or whatever, I told T, I'm like, I'll go down. I was like, I'll open up the shop or whatever, because I had my own key way back in the day. So I was like, I'll open up. You know, if, if you guys got stuff going on, you don't have to worry about it. So he's like, all right. So then I started going out to some of the shows around the shop shop and just started working random shit there and just getting more ring time. Um, and then I ended up finding another home in RICW. Um, and those are pretty much like the two mainstays that I've been working with out of the chop shop. Um, and then watch this fight obviously came around couple years ago and started up again so I've, I've been doing that one too now there's multiple promotions that run out of the chop shop and and i might have had maybe one of you fine men and women kind of go uh off the, the uh kind of rattle off the promotion list uh, yeah. but could you tell us the fans because what i like to do and this is one of the very main purposes of why i do these interviews it's a to get more eyes on the talent but it's also b to get more eyes on the promotions that you guys and girls work for. So if you could just rattle off uh, what you could remember, uh, what promotions go in and work throughout the chop shop and just don't give us the three call letters. Give us, you know, the, the full name yeah. if you could, sir. All right. So uh, we got RICW, the Rhode Island championship wrestling, uh, RWA renegade wrestling Alliance, uh, WTF. We watch this fight. Um, uh, the RWA, Oh, no, no, not RWA. Fucking, uh, well, what the hell is the other one? That, the MAW. But I forgot what the new name is. It's RUA right yes. now. Or RUW. Yes, right? RUW. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. The R-U-W, Renegade yeah. Underground Wrestling or whatever, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And there's another one that runs out of there sometimes. They had a couple of shows there. Uh, but it's Acid Championship Wrestling. Oh, know. really? Acid? Yeah. I did not. I thought you were yeah. going to go to outside the box wrestling. Well, that, yeah, that, was, that the, was there. Yes, yes, that was. Um, Actually, Acid, I'm their heavyweight champion right now. That's the reason why I knew that. Is, uh, is it still an active company, Acid? Because I've uh, never heard of them. I know they they still put stuff up on the uh, on the on the group page. Um, They just ordered a new championship belt. And hmm. uh, they're talking about trying to get it. Uh, I guess he said he's going to end up messaging T or whatever to try getting another date down here. Uh, um, just reannounce that name again because I want to go look that up. Just Acid Championship Wrestling. Okay. Acid Championship yeah, Wrestling. They're from, I gotta look that one up. They're from um uh, shit. Somewhere in Mass. I forgot where. But like I've been mass. there. I've yeah. been there a couple times. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, <bye>. Also <laughs> Also I and I'm just helping you with the list so we can try to get as many out there. Yeah. I've I've had uh Todd Graham on here. Oh yeah, PG. Wow. I forgot about he that. Asked, oh, shit. I, I, I know. <laughs> you might get a foot up your ass for that right? one. Right? Uh, oh, yeah. He actually came on my show, uh, our show, oh, and nice. he signed the IWTV contract right here on Stirring oh, the Pot. Wow. Yeah. It was, oh, I thought that was really, <laughs> really cool, man. Right. <laughs> um, so for, for the fans that are watching this, look up these fine companies, hit the like. Go on the YouTubes. Go on whatever medias that you guys are following. Check these companies out. And, and you know, kind of get your eyes on that. And if you're digging it, take the ride to the chop shop. For me, we're talking a, just a slight over two-hour ride. And I was going there quite often, like by, on a monthly uh, basis for a while. Uh, so get out there. Have some fun at the chop shop. There's a lot of fine men and women out there, a lot of fine uh, promotions that are running through there. And, uh, man, I, I could go on and on about the talent and the promotions that do go through the chop shop, but what other promotions does Mr. Abruzzi work for out 
Oh, excuse me. Outside of the chop shop. Um, my other big one is uh, New World Wrestling Extreme. Okay. Uh, I'm the open weight champion there. And August 18th, I'll actually be wrestling Ty Shine. The best pros in the biz, if uh, you will. Of course. Oh, yeah. Now, I used to be a... Uh, I used to be a Ty Shine fan. Oh, shit. But before this whole King Kong... <laughs> King COVID! He get, no, never mind. Uh, now, before this whole King COVID thing happened, there was a show at Tessa Strength Wrestling. Fine promotion out of uh, East Hartford, Connecticut, run by Slick Wagner yep. Brown. Yep. That's my home base, baby. Love me some okay. TOS. And, and uh, I will tell you one thing. Lone Survivor 2 was their last big show. Yeah. And it was, at, uh, <laughs> it was at the Deuce in Northampton, Mass. Okay. There was a lot of happenings on that show. But one of them, Ty Shine was supposed to return and have a match. It was going to be an open challenge, if you will. And he was been trying to call out Anthony Michaels. I don't know if you're familiar with Anthony yep. Michaels. Yep. Trying to reel him back in the ring, if you will. That didn't work at a training day. So at Lone Survivor 2, he was still trying to kind of reel him in. Yep. Instead, he had a T-shirt, a youth-sized T-shirt. And he wanted to give a kid his T-shirt. Okay, Nobody knew where this was going. Well, in comes Anthony Michaels' uh, uh, son, 13 yep. years old, and son of a bitch, if he didn't give him the merch, the kid went to go turn around, or, the, you know, Anthony Michaels turned around. The kid, I, I forget the exact, exact yeah. moment what happened, but all I know is Ty Shine DDT to 13-year-old, and it was heard across the world. Yeah, now, I saw that video. Oh, you did? Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, oh, yeah. First off, thank you for watching. Second off, doesn't that piss you off? Third off, please kick his ass and retain that championship my friend because i did map it out i think that's like a three hour fucking drive for me so i'm oh, not going to be able to pick that one no <laughs> yeah so uh i know that's up and coming and you are going against high shine yep. i used to love the best brows in the biz but things have right. changed times are returning uh the king covid made him flip his fucking wig <laughs> oh, uh, yeah so and i know i rambled on about mr ty shine but my point being kick his arse retain oh, yeah. that belt my friend i got you uh, now, now, how does a match between yourself and Ty Shine come about? Uh, did he call you out? Did you call him out? Did the promoter book uh, this? Uh, how did this come about? The the promoter actually booked it, uh, like two years ago. We wrestled each other, and uh, I beat him. And then I guess uh, I, I guess he ended up crying. I guess he ended up crying to the promoter again and uh, wanting another rematch. So, uh, so, so that, that's that. That's how this is all going about again. Okay. So what? Uh, he's looking for redemption, if you will, because yeah. of what happened previously. Pretty much. Uh, how long have you been the open weight champion? Uh oh, little over two years. <gasps> yeah, I love title reigns, my friend. Oh, so Lengthly do I. Title. <laughs> Give them to me. Give them to me. Lengthly, because uh, especially if you're face, we love a title run. Uh, oh, yeah. But you know, and and, and and I have to kind of flip flop a little bit because when you are a heel and have a good title run. That pisses us off so bad that we just want to see you just die today. Get you know, like yep. somebody come and take that belt. <laughs> Hurry up, and it never happens, and it always yep. keeps us on the edge of our seat. Uh, so I love, and I didn't mean to scream "die." That wasn't my intention. <laughs> uh, <laughs> woo, uh, but I will say I do love title reigns. Uh, yeah. I'm a fan of that myself. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I hope. I hope. Things don't turn around for you. We yeah, got to keep that belt intact with Mr. Abruzzi and keep that title run going. Hell yeah. Uh, within that organization, what other uh, championships do they offer? Um, they have their NWW heavyweight champion. Uh, Who's that? Oh, shit. <gasps> you don't know the champ champ? Uh, no, I don't. I forgot who <gasps> it was. Oh, uh, no. Uh oh. I don't remember. They're going to make Ty Shine give you some crazy yeah, spot right? now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, shit, I really cannot remember who the hell it is. Oh, my God. I put Mr. Bruzy on the spot, and I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of effing, him, I'm, I'm effing him over right now. I, I can tell you who the tag champs are. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't I know, but go ahead and tell us. The House of Pain. Oh, God, the House of Pain. <laughs> Please. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> the, I've had it up to here with the House of Pain. 
Uh, right. Again, and I, I didn't mean to say that TOS is just my home base. I actually have two of them. Uh, PAPW, they're the tag champs over there now uh, at Paradise Alley Pro in East Haven. That's another yep. two of them because I'm from Connecticut, so we have a distance between us. Yeah. Uh, but those are my two home bases. I don't try to miss a damn show, big or little, because they both have these cool little shows. Obviously, Tessa Strength has a training day, which is for free, F-R-E-E, -E, for free. Once a month, Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m., at their training facility at the dojo, why that place doesn't have a thousand people there, I'll never yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, uh, second off, PAPW, they do their smaller shows now. They call them Friday Night Alley Fights, and they do those at their facilities. They've done them for two years now. Oh, damn. Wait, one year? Two years? Two years? One year? I'm fucking lost on that. Maybe maybe a year and a half. We'll, we'll split it in yeah, the middle. There you go. That's and, perfect. And uh, those are only five bucks. It, it, you know, it might as well be free because yeah, right. five bucks really That's isn't right. a whole lot of money to get in and watch some fine wrestling. And uh, both of those uh, smaller venues, if you will, have fantastic, fantastic shows. But not only that, Tessa Strength takes it on the road. They've been doing bigger road shows. I, I call them their pay-per-views, if you will. Uh, and PAPW, they've always done bigger shows. So yep. they brought yep. back the smaller show to incorporate yep. with their bigger shows. There you go. So, uh, again... Yeah. Uh, boys and girls, these these uh, companies I'm talking about, look them up. Test of Strength, Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. Look them up and check out. It's so much fun, my friend. Uh, do you know of both companies? Yes, I do. Yep. Uh, uh, could we see Mr. Abruzzi at some of, you know, Test of Strength? They have, again, full of characters uh, from, from miles away. I would oh, love yeah. to see Mr. Abruzzi at uh, Test of Strength. I have you ever been to Test of Strength? No, I have. I've, me and Ty were talking about getting me down there, but I still haven't made a chance to actually get down there. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to get down there at some point. Mm. Um, and I, I figured out who the champ was. So, uh, Dolly, Dolly Desima. Oh, that's, oh yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah. We don't know if, each other very well, but we do know of each other. Yeah. He's going to eye poke me the next time he sees me just for that. Uh, he might do worse to you, but oh, he's going to eye poke probably. me. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm definitely going to get a Roddy Piper eye poke. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. I cannot believe we both, that slipped our minds. Holy Caroli. Uh, I, knew, I knew the title changed last time. That's why I was sitting there. I'm like, oh, how? Who the hell was it? <laughs> but, yeah, it was him. <laughs> uh, now, I always like to gauge on this show as well. It might be a repetitive question, but I don't know the, the answer to this, and that's why I try to bring it out. Uh, now, I know the whole no fan thing is very awkward when you click on your favorite yep. programming, well, when it comes to wrestling. Uh, but we'll, we'll even take it from pre-COVID. Uh, <laughs> COVID. You, uh, never mind. Uh, we'll go free uh, virus. And yep. are you watching any of the current product? You name a call letter that's a, a major platform uh, New Japan, WWE, ROH, Impact, uh, now, you know, uh, AEW. I mean, you name it. Are you watching any of those? Or uh, do you kind of keep your eye on the NBC? Uh, I, I watch a lot of NXT. Uh, okay. I, I love NXT, and I've loved NXT since they started. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I watch that more so than anything else. And, obviously, some of the indie shit that I see on Facebook, I end up following more of those videos and starting to watch more of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I, I, I pretty much watch NXT more than anything. I do have to say, uh, the majority that I've spoken to and asked that question, um, it's drawn to NXT. Could you explain to us, the fans... Because some fans are very smart. Yeah. Some fans are casual fans. Some don't know the lingo. That's why I tried to kind of yeah. maybe pause and describe what we're talking about at times. Yep. Uh, you as a, a wrestler or a fan, you could answer this question however you would like. Why NXT? Ah, uh, Because the, the storylines that Triple H has. And he actually shows that he cares about the future of these people. And he cares about the future of his product. And he actually cares about his product as a whole. Um, you know what they do down there with their with their characters, the development, friggin' uh, the storylines. Everything always makes sense. Whereas WWE is still a hit or miss. You could either have one great storyline going, and then all of a sudden it's a drizzle and shits, or you could have a drizzle and shit storyline that actually ends up making sense somewhere down the road in the long run. But tri Triple H, everything from point A to point Z is fucking perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. I love I love what they do with that. Now uh, drizzle and shits is a wrestling term. <laughs> But I don't have to break that down. It's no. very self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> uh, you guys, whenever I started hearing that, I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, now, if I could break a little something down, though, uh, when when you're the shit, you're the shit. But when you're the drizzling shit, you don't want to be that. No, uh, not at that, all. That's something you don't want to be, is the drizzling. <laughs> Woo! Uh, absolutely love that term. Uh, that is something that will never go away from me, ever, uh, because yeah. I'm the drizzling shit, if you, if you will. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, no, no uh, the NXT brand, I find it's got that independent flavor still. Yep. While still trying to be on a bigger, you know, on that bigger platform, obviously. Uh, but, and I don't like to get into the, the back part of it, the politics or drama or anything, but I have been hearing stories that Vince is about to get his claws into the NXT brand. Uh, what are you, <laughs> you're already shaking your head. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, what are your feelings on that, my friend? I hope not. Because uh, if he gets his claws into that, it's going to end up being just like freaking WWE in the mainstay. So it's, uh, it's all going to start going downhill. <clears throat> I think it's been fantastic for what they've done. Uh, now, have you uh, seen the NXT, those three call letters? Have you seen it way back when, when they did the student mentor thing? Yep, yep. And it was very, very different. Oh, yeah. It was totally different. Uh, and then, uh, like a lot of people don't know that never followed that product, you know, through those transitions. I was watching FCW. When it was on once a week on a Saturday, you had to yep. catch it. I believe it was at noonish, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. The yep. studio was a very small room, anywhere between 50 to maybe, and I do mean maybe, 100 yep. people. Oh, 100 yeah, was, was probably was. way too many. It was probably like 50, 60 people on the most token. Yep. But FCW, that's where we saw, like, uh, you know, the Shield come up when they weren't the Shield. Yep. That's where we saw uh, Alberto Del Rio when. It was Alberto Beretta in a fucking pink jumpsuit, for <laughs> Christ's sake. Yep. Uh, I don't, that's where I really started catching on to FCW. That whole NXT thing wasn't really my flavor that they were trying to do. Yeah. With the whole mentor, teacher, you know, student thing. I watched it a little bit, but I kind of fell off that train. Yeah. But when I knew that uh, WWE had this F -sub, uh, FCW, was their training kind of stomping their training grounds? I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to watch that. And I was watching every single Saturday. And then yeah. all of a sudden, there was no more FCW and it became nope. <sighs> NXT. And holy shit, my mind was blown, my oh, friend. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, now, I didn't mean to kind of stay on that NXT topic, but it's fine. I do myself like NXT, but I love the evolution from FCW to NXT. I thought that was fantastic uh, because it took it to a new level instantly from the very first show when Seth Rollins was their first champion. The whole fucking oh, night. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the whole black and white hair down the that middle. Was, of yep. everything. That was awesome. And, and I mean, that X, dude, that X was as big as my fucking that was, chest that, that they had huge. on that. head. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, good times watching that the evolution of the company. Yep. Uh, where does Mr. Abruzzi go from here? Uh, does his character stay where it is? Does he stay the Saturday Night Delight? Is he having so much fun to where, you know what? I'm just going to kind of run this out until either the fans aren't responding or I'm just not digging it. Or are you just going to – do you have something set in the near future where, you know what, in another year – I'm done with the delight thing, and I'm going to do X. You don't have to tell us what X is if yep. you do have yep. a goal. But what do you got going on as a character? Uh, I mean, I've, I've been thinking about it, and uh, I kind of wanted to run it out pretty much until the fans lost interest or I lose interest. Um, I, I love the gimmick. I love the whole freaking run that I'm having right now. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm starting to lose it myself a little bit, and I, I kind of want to make that little turn. But uh, I'm still not 100%. <laughs> um, like, cause like I said, I love coming out. I love smiling. I love getting the crowd behind me, but then mm -hmm. I also love being that dickhead. <laughs> uh, now you can be a villain or a, a, a bad guy, if you will, yep. without being vulgar. I, I, I see it all the yep. time. You don't have to, you can really pull this stuff off without, and, and I swear like a sailor, I really do. Oh, yeah. so do uh, I. <laughs> but, but when you're at the shows, you don't have to, as a bad guy or a heel, nope. use the vulgar language to get your point across. Uh, that is something that I hope more guys and, and girls that are heels, and I've heard it a plenty, 
not all the time, and it's not rampant by any oh, means. Yeah. But you don't have to if you just kind of uh, get a little more creative, if you will. Yeah, you so know, you, 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 you could be that dickhead and have your one saying without swearing, and you all could right. get the crowd to hate you like that. Absolutely. But, hey. I do it all the time with the with the men and women right. I, I I promo. I can get you guys to hate me in a second. I I never swear at you people. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm scared shitless to swear at you people. <laughs> so why the fuck would I want to do that? Uh, now, the RWA. Yep. Fine fine promotion. I can't wait to see the RICW and all of those promotions that we were speaking of. I can't wait to see where we get what we're what they bring to the table for us the fans and. For you men and women waiting to get back into that ring because you guys and girls have to be clawing, literally clawing to get inside that ring. Oh, yeah. uh, and we, the fans, we're just as amped up and ready uh, to do this. Uh, now, when you come back, obviously you already have something on your plate uh, with Ty Shine yep. and your open weight championship. But RWA and RICW, since those are your mainstays, I'd like to kind of get your goal or what you have on your plate once show one comes back. Uh, is there any names? Is there any titles? Uh, what's on your plate, Mr. There's, Bruce? There's actually two title chances. Um, one at RICW. It's actually me mm-hmm. versus Jacqueline Spox for the uh, RICW Universal Champion. Um, I heard she has a hell of a right hand. Oh, friend. Yeah. She's already hit me once with it. So, yeah, I, I, I felt it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, I got that in RICW and RWA um, at the last show that they had. Uh, Cipriano was hurt. Well, my brother was hurt. And it ended up being me and Dozer against the Hoods. And if me and Dozer won, uh, Greg would get a title shot. And he would have to pick either Dozer or myself. Um, so when we, when we actually get back there, he hasn't made the decision yet. So when we get back there, he actually has to make the decision. And then that mat, that title match is supposed to be at that show. The fans have been hanging all of this time <laughs> to find out what the F oh, is going yeah. on. Yep. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. <laughs> wow. Uh, you poor son of a bitch of fans <laughs> over at the chop shop just hanging on and waiting. Yeah. Uh, holy cow. I, I feel for you, my friends over there. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, I, I would be dying. I would be blowing up your fucking DMs <laughs> like mad. Uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Abruzzi, yeah. I cannot. And again, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time out of your life and, and with everything going on. Spending the time. And being open and talking to us. And I've got a million more questions, but we could talk for hours. And that's what oh, I not yeah. like to do because our attention spans, if it's too much more than an hour, we're not going to watch <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. Yeah. So what I'd like to do is an open invitation down the road. I can ask you more questions and then see what's going on with Mr. Bruzy in the future when we all yeah. get back to this crazy shit. All right. That would be awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, now... Is there any message before I let you go? Oh, oh, wait. First off, where can we find Mr. Abruzzi on the social medias? Uh, you can find me on the Facebook page. Uh, if you search for Vinny Abruzzi. Um, my Instagram is vabruzzi723. I lied, 729. Sorry. And my Twitter handle is vabruzzi23. Oh. No, I always want to try to squeeze that in there because we want to get more eyes on Mr. Abruzzi. Yep. And yep. again, and again, the promotions that he works for. Uh, now, before I do let you go, uh, is there anything that I've kind of not touched upon or uh, maybe a message to your peers or the fans or anything you'd like to say before we kind of skedaddle, if you will? Uh, pretty much to the fans. Uh, just, you know, suck it up a couple more months, maybe even only a month. And you can see us kicking each other's ass all over again. Short and sweet, right, right. to the point. Perfect. Mm. Uh, my my message, and I'm not trying to overstep your message. Uh, let's see Ty Shine <laughs> not win that belt. No. Uh, just gotta put that <laughs> up there. Uh, Mr. Abruzzi, an absolute. 
in absolute delight. You <laughs> see what I did there? There it is. <laughs> oh, that perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Woo. Uh, this is starting to pop with Don Kincaid and my very special guest, Saturday Night Delight. I got it right. Oh, that's the name of this episode right there. Saturday Night, Saturday Night Delight. I got it right. Uh, Mr. Saturday Night Delight, Vinny Abruzzi, I thank you again, my friend. Thank you. Ready?